live early because it's snowing. Sound good? Oh, good, it kicked in. Yeah, it kicked in. We'll start letting people come in. Are you gonna talk the whole time? Maybe, because you have lots to say. That's good. Yeah, we're gonna get some folks signing on and they're gonna see you. Right? Oh, we got a couple folks. You say good morning, Gracie. I'll move you sideways. Hi, everybody. We tuned in a little early because it's snowing. And we were gonna do it outside, but why not add on a little bit early because Apparently it's winter again. Huh. Actually, it's not. We're used to snow in the um, winter or springtime. Robert! Hi, Robert. I hope you guys are watching with the kids. Hi, guys. Um, Robert is one of our electricians over at the new facility. Um, kiddos, your dad is a pretty stellar dude. Nice job. And part of the, the bearded villains, I think, right? Good morning, Caitlin. Good morning. Let's see. Oh, I have to get over this way. Robin, good morning. Welcome, everybody. Gracie's going to chat the whole time while we're talking um, because that's what Gracie does. And welcome to morning meetings. Can you see yourself? Who is that? Whoa. That's a pretty broad wing talk in there, isn't it? Yeah. Good morning, Charlie. Good morning, Robert. Good morning, Sue. I think she is seeing herself in her in the camera, which is kind of crazy. From Connecticut, welcome from Connecticut. You guys will see these guys before we do, huh, Miss Miss? Hi, Kim. Oh, we like to call them bird nerds, right? Mark and Debbie, thank you guys so much for tuning in, um, and welcome to our morning meeting, guys. So my name is Sarah, and I'm the community engagement specialist here at the Center for Wildlife. And this is Grace, who is our broad-winged hawk. And Gracie is an absolute love of a bird. Um, broad wings tend to be a little bit higher strung um, just in their nature. Uh, but Grace is this amazing, phenomenal girl that allows us to get a up close view um, of these phenomenal, phenomenal birds. Um, so for those of you that don't know uh, what the Center for Wildlife is, we are a small nonprofit in the state of Maine. We are in Cape Nettick, Maine, um, nestled right at the base of Mount Agamenicus, which is really lucky for us because it's right below a flyway. Um, and the, the flyway is where the hawks travel over. Um, and so Gracie here actually would be traveling a lot. These guys are one of our very long distance migrators. Um, and so sometimes we'll get some wild ones that come in to visit us. Hi, Lisa. She is beautiful. And Christine watching from Exeter. Um, oh, very cool. You have a resident Broadwing. Isn't that the best sound when you hear that? Um, good morning, Carolyn. Welcome, welcome. Um, I know I'm, I'm just moving my hand back over this way. Okay. That's, it's cool. We're good. Um, I love when my Broadwings, and well, they're not mine, but they live in the back of my woods. Um, and the second you hear that sort of piercing call, they do a pew. Was that it? It was, it was decent, right? It was okay. Um, you can hear them and they're just lovely. Hi, Charlie, you're three. Oh man, that's exciting. I love being three. It was a great age, right, Miss Grace? So Gracie's actually even older than you, Charlie. Michaela, I love Grace too. So Grace came to us in 2006. Um, unfortunately, she went through a window on a um, trailer and suffered some pretty severe um, neurologic damage as well as some um, muscular damage and things like that. Um, so we are a wildlife uh, medical facility. We take in up to 2,500 wild animals a year. Hi, Braden, age six, and Kristen, nice to have you with us. Um, so when she came into our clinic, uh, we treated her and you know, we just realized uh, after a couple weeks that um, she was off. So when you imagine how big she is, you know, she's, she's pretty small. She weighs about as much as if you go into your pantry and get one of the boxes of spaghetti. That's how much she weighs. So if you put her on your, put the spaghetti in your hand, that's what she weighs right here. They're not very big. Hi, sweet girl. There you go. And you have to remember too, their bones are hollow and they have a pretty complex nerve system and neurologic system. Um, so she was unable to be released uh, because even though her name is Grace, she is not graceful. 
Um, so she is an eternal optimist every day uh, before we re-ramped or redid her enclosure. Um, she would go to the edge of her uh, platform and just go, I'm going to fly today. She has no flight. Um, and so she would just fall over and unfortunately she would sometimes hurt herself. Good morning, Kristen. Um, and so the decision was made to keep her. Uh, hi, Deborah. Oh, thank you so much. Um, and so we've had her ever since 2006, which is kind of amazing. Um, so we're now in 2020. She's at least 14. She was an adult when she came in. Um, good morning, Michelle. And she is in retirement now because she is getting older. Uh, these guys are not meant to be here year round. They actually will migrate 5,000 miles south um, to South America in the wintertime in these huge kettles. I think I read somewhere that they can um, fly or glide uh, up to 45 miles in a day, which is amazing. Um, isn't it? It's kind of phenomenal. Yeah, you're so good. Um, so when we get ambassadors in, because they're non-releasable due to their primary injuries, did you see that heart on the screen? That's funny. <laughs> Hi, Elizabeth. Uh, nice to meet you, actually. Let's see, what's their average age in the wild? Mm, you're looking at, you know, 10 would be substantial. It's a tough lot in life, especially for birds that migrate that far, um, because you're going to run into a lot of issues. You're going to run into um, both, you know, pesticides and herbicides, insecticides, things like that. They run into, unfortunately, getting hit by cars. Um, window strikes are unfortunately a big thing. Uh, turbine strikes, things like that. And it takes a lot of effort and energy to travel that far. So um, they definitely live longer with us. I'm just gonna come through and make sure I'm saying hi to everybody. Um, Sharon, what does she eat every day and how much of it? So Gracie is sort of my spirit animal in that if you give her food, she'll eat it and eat it and eat it and eat it. But normally she gets one to two mice a day. She also gets chicken quail um, on alternating days to help just sort of mix it up for her. So she likes that quite a bit. Good morning, Jenny Lynn. Hi, Karen and Cheryl. Good morning, Delaney and Anders from Dover. Grace is beautiful. I would agree with that. Hi, Nanette. I know the little chirping. It's sort of this like... I, I don't even know. It's just, it makes my heart happy. Hi, Tara. Oh, wonderful. We know, love that you love to visit her. Gracie is at least, let's see, 2006 to 2020, so 14. Um, and, oh my gosh, Christine, yeah, I bet. So if you tune into our, uh, she just said that her cat is going crazy looking for the bird. If you tune into our Facebook Live with Maeve, who's our Merlin Falcon, um, she will get your animals in your house all riled up because it's a super, super um, high-pitched noise and it drives my dogs, everyone bananas. It's so funny. Um, Karen, yeah, we love her talking too. She's a good, good girl. Let's see. Oh, I'm just gonna, I know I moved my hand too fast. I'm so sorry. Oh, hi, Sharon and Larry. Thank you so much for tuning in and we missed you guys. We hope you're doing well. Um, so I'm gonna chat a little bit more about Miss Grace here. So she is a broad-winged hawk, and I know I'm gonna show them some stuff. Yeah, we're just gonna hold it up, okay? So this is, she's a member of the Beautio family. Um, a red-tailed hawk is also a Beautio. So I know I'm just gonna go real slow, darling. Okay, there we go. So we see this beautiful broad-winged hawk wing. So nice and broad, these guys are built to really um, soar on thermals. So if they had to flap their wings the whole time, yeah, those wings, it would take a lot of effort and energy to get down um, to South America, that 5,000 mile um, flight that they take. And these guys travel in kettles, so large groups of them. If you catch it on a good day, you can have hundreds if not thousands of them. Um, for the same reason that we do um, you know, when tractor trailer drivers, where are you going? You just readjusting? Okay. When tractor trailer drivers, you know, get in a, a convoy, um, it's just efficient, right? Someone, the first one is breaking up the turbulence in the um, air, and then everybody rides along behind. So if you can catch up with a kettle, absolutely amazing to go and check out. 
Um, and lots of times during migration season, you'll have lots of really wonderful birders who are willing to, um, you know, share their binoculars or share their knowledge. Uh, it's a really great time to get out there. Uh, and when folks see them, it's super fun because everyone's sharing what they know and sharing that experience. And it's like kids in a candy store when you get a good kettle going over. So I know. Cran Cakes and Gracie. Hi, Miller. I miss you guys. When when this is all over, we're going to have to meet up in Dover. Huh? Over in Dover. So I'm going to show this wing again. A kettle. Oh, you learned something new. Wonderful. So you see that beautiful broad wing? I know. I'm going to put this down so then I can show them what the falcon wings look like. Okay. Let's see. Is her flat head part of her distinctive features? No. I mean, ish. So they're, they're, shaped in a way that um, it allows them to fly and, and maneuver really well. Right now she has the back, I know I'm going to just move my hand up here, the back of her feathers are up so she probably looks a little bit um, like she has a flat head. It could also be, I mean Gracie like I said is not graceful so unfortunately she does. Are you okay? What's going on? Like for instance, I, I'm not going to move my hand because it affects her balance but I'm using a larger glove and I don't need to because her feet are not that strong or large, um, but she needs that bigger space for her to be on. Yeah, what do you think? So I'm gonna just reach forward slowly around her. Hi, Dan Gardoki. Hi, Heidi. And then hold up this wing, which is a falcon's wing. This is from an American Kestrel. So you can see that that's really shaped for diving and, and cutting and things like that through the air. I know I'll put that down because you don't like it. That's fine. You don't have to like it. I'll move it. I'll move it out of your way, darling. Better? Okay, there we go. Um, so, you know, it, it's amazing. We draw a lot of inspiration from nature. We draw a lot of inspiration from nature. Um, hi, Mike. I miss you too. Um, for designs of things, for instance, our bullet train um, in Japan, when they first designed it, it was causing massive reverberations in the um, air and surrounding areas. And people who lived around it were like, ah, you know, this is crazy. It was giving people headaches. It was awful. Um, and they figured out how to redesign it by looking at a kingfisher and how a kingfisher cuts through um, the, oh, did you see Percy back there? Percy is getting in on all of our Facebook lives, which I am amused with. Gracie is exploring everything. I love it. Um, so nature's smart in their design. There's no sort of extra, right? Everything's there for a reason. Um, so it's fascinating to watch these guys. I mean, if you think of how a hang glider is built, very similar for a beautio. You know, they're going to be able to just ride those thermal waves um, or thermal air, and they go up and up and up, and then you'll see them sign up peel off um, and it's so fun to watch them uh, when they come back oftentimes Gracie comes springtime she does lay eggs they are not fertilized um, hi Elise thank you so much she is a beautiful bird she says you're beautiful 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 let's see Dan Gardoki oh cool very rarely do I know something that Dan Gardoki doesn't if you guys are tuning in um, to Facebook lives or podcasts right now definitely tune in to Lead with Nature. Um, Dan Gardoki is both a friend and a colleague. And he's right down the road. And he's so fun to learn about birds with because it should be fun, right? Like we should be like kids in a candy store. Um, they're just so neat to listen to and watch and, and try and understand, but they're really complex too. So definitely tune in to Lead with Nature. He has some podcasts out there of just learning bird calls, which are super fun. Um, so definitely tune him in. Uh, it's just, it's so cool to watch all of our colleagues, um, you know, kind of pivot and twist, I guess, if you will, and, and see them shine in this scenario. Um, hi, Tim from Enzo. How can hawks glide through the air? So again, when I, can I, can I take up the wing? It's a little different. I'm going to hold up the wing one more time. We just go slow because Gracie's like, what are you doing? And see that wing? So if you think of a hang glider, right? That's one side of the hang glider, and then the other wing would be the other. So they'll flap, and they'll use those thermals to, to rise up. You know, they'll kind of, you'll see it with the vultures and other ones like that. And then they'll peel off, and they'll, they'll 
just sort of glide down. I always sort of envision them as like the surfers of the sky, if you will. Um, I know, Grace. It's so exciting. Um, Joanne, I love the names you pick for your ambassadors. Thank you very much. We spend a lot of time thinking and giving them names that honor them and also um, represent who they are. Uh, because you know, it, it's a 50-50. Some people don't name their ambassadors. Oh, Sharon Kelly, thank you so much for donating. That was going to be on my next next thing to mention. We do have a donate button. So if y'all are able to donate, that's super, super helpful. Um, so some folks don't name ambassadors and that's totally fine. It's different people's prerogatives. Um, usually when folks are Working with ambassador animals, they may not have, you know, if they don't name them, they may not have public names for them, but usually you would have a, a name, you know, behind. Michael, thank you so much for donating. Um, but we have found, you know, studies have shown that uh, you are more likely to develop um, empathy or a bond with an animal um, that has a name because we have names. And so when we name our animals, um, oftentimes it comes from their species, it comes from their personalities, it comes um, from sort of alliteration sometimes, like violet and vulture are, is our vulture. Uh, but each, each one of the names is, is really well um, researched, thought out, um, and we want it to be uh, a beautiful, wonderful name that shows respect and admiration for them. For instance, Bertram, who's our um, raven. Bertram means bright raven, um, which is kind of cool. Good morning, Kristen Brewster. Gracie says good morning. Good morning, Beth. Hi, how you doing? Thank you all for tuning in so much. Um, if you are able to donate, we do have the donate button. Oh, hi, Kim Smith. Say, sh may, Be sure to say hi to Ron for us. Um, so I did mention that she is a beautio, and I just wanted to show the difference in a couple, oh, I almost grabbed the wrong foot, in a couple of the feet. These ones we don't have to put by you. I'm going to put them in the front, okay? Let's see. Elise, the noise she's making, what she's trying to explain. It's it's kind of a baby call, and because she's been with us for so long, she just that's just what she does. She just sort of chatters. Um, it's fun, too, in the springtime when um, spring comes around and she gets spring in her step if you will um when we pull in she recognizes us um, in the driveway and she'll give us a call oh thank you beth so much um for donating we really appreciate it um so it's just her sort of recognizing and chatting and talking and um it's just a lovely little chatter that we get um if she's upset the or scared that call goes much higher um, and is, it is, I got too close, sorry, and is much more piercing. Um, so it is just sort of a little chitter chatter. She's sharing with you about her day, right? Is it snowing and then raining and then snowing and then raining? Grace says, I can't. This is why I would migrate farther south. Let's see. Stephanie, good morning from Fairfield. My husband is a biologist for the National Park Service. Oh, I love that you guys are able to tune in. I love it. Yes, Elise, it is a very sweet, sweet baby call. Um, yeah, she's very, very sweet. Are they monogamous with their mates in the wild, Sharon asks. They are-ish. So they're, you, it's the life, they love each other or they are committed to each other for a lifetime. Um, that would be the lifetime of the other mate. And they also separate um, in the wintertime and then come back together in the spring. Again, like I said, they migrate about 5,000 miles south um, to get down to South America for the winters. Uh, Grace, for instance, sorry, I moved my hand too fast. I'm sorry about that. Um, Grace, for instance, if it's below 30 degrees, she comes inside. Um, she has a heated yurt. Do you have a heated yurt in your enclosure with a little heat lamp? Yeah, so you can hang out. That's pretty cool. You you kind of got it made, my friend. Um, I actually just found something new, which is super exciting for me because I have them in the back in my woods, but I've never been able to find their nest. And when I was, you know, reading up on them, just because we always learn new things, um, it's always good to continue learning that the nests are usually, what did it say, the lower third of the canopy. And so they're usually in deciduous, uh, mixed forests. Um, and they're, hi Herman, hi Grace. They usually use the first main crotch of a tree. 
um, and build sort of a platform nest. So now that I know to go look for that, I might be able to find the nest, which would be really, really cool. Uh, Liz, love your live videos. So educational, wonderful. We're so glad that you guys are turning in, uh, are turning. I just, I did that yesterday too, tuning in. Um, and thank you again for those that are donating. It makes all the difference in the world. We've had to stop um, in-person programming. Um, and that is, that's a large chunk of revenue for us. Uh, Robert, we can't wait to bring your, for you to bring your family over to the new facility too we're so so lucky to have the people working on it that are um they're just pouring their hearts and souls into it so there's just such incredible energy in the new place grace has already walked over there with us haven't you did you go check it out yes ma'am is it so exciting you're such a good girl she's so funny she can kind of see herself right now i'm gonna move my hand again just slowly because grace is definitely you know, aware that I'm moving and I'm going to hold up this foot. So this is a broad winged hawk's foot. Yeah, look at that. Do you have two of those? You do. So you can see those talons on the end. Sorry, it's a little out of focus. I'm still new at this. Um, well, there's the foot. <laughs> and you can see there's no feathers on these feet. Um, our owls have feathered feet. So for these guys, no feathers and they don't need them. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And then I'm gonna hold up, I know, but I would like to share with them the difference between, I'm gonna just move you back a little. Is that, you're gonna rearrange, you, whatever you need to do. We're good? Mm, okay. There you go. So the foot on the top is a broad, or sorry, a red-tailed hawk foot. And the foot on the bottom is a broad winged hawk's foot. So they are, um, you can see the difference in size, but they are both members of the Budio family. Um, so it, it's kind of cool to think about, um, you know, these guys out there in the wild. It's funny, they, they have a lot of personality for a little tiny bird. Let me hop up here because I saw a couple questions. Elise, how old is Grace? She came to us in 2006, um, so she is at least 14. Um, which is, she's retired. She's an older lady. Um, she's, she's more in a geriatric, um, mode. I don't know if you can see on her left eye, she does have a cataract on her left eye, um, which happens as our, um, ambassadors get older. Uh, so, you know, we, we deal with those issues as well. She's actually due for a health check. So after this, she's going to go get her health check done, which will be very exciting. Um, we give them annual exams. Um, they're also weighed multiple times a week too, just to keep an eye on them and, and make sure everyone's happy and healthy. Oh, Ben, thank you so much for donating. That's so helpful. Um, it really, it makes a huge difference for us. So we're, we're really grateful for those that can donate. Uh, Marsha, good morning from Cape Netic. Looking forward to the new facility. We are too. Absolutely. Um, Sharon, do they have any natural predators? They do. Um, so other birds will eat them. Um, if they're sitting on a nest, uh, they're always, you know, a little more susceptible for getting um, eaten or attacked or whatever else. Um, but their main thing that threatens them um, are humans. So uh, window impacts and things like that, as well as, um, you know, the use of pesticides, herbicides, rodenticides. It doesn't take much for rodenticide um, to really hurt these guys. So if you guys uh, have mice in your house, I don't want mice in my house. You know, and I, I have a cat that lives indoors. She's useless. Um, so when I, it, when the mice move in, yeah, I, I use the good old fashioned snap trap because believe it or not, it is the most humane method. Um, don't ever use, please don't ever use sticky traps. Um, and please don't use rodenticides because you know what you're, we don't live in a vacuum. Um, you know, what we do to ourselves, we do to, or what we do to the environment, we do to ourselves. So if you're using rodenticide, um, if you have a pest control company, um, that you use and they put out those big black boxes. Those are rodenticide. Um, and the way I describe it for people to try and understand is, um, so like for humans, if a woman is pregnant, she's not supposed to eat tuna fish more than once a, a week if she has to eat it um, because of the mercury levels and it builds up in their system and it builds up in our system. Same thing with rodenticide. Um, it's a really, really terrible 
painful way um, to die. Um, and unfortunately, we do see that in them. Um, these guys also, unfortunately, do get shot. You know, they'll be around chicken coops. Not to get your chicken, because she only weighs 500 grams. If you go to your pantry and get out a box of spaghetti, that's how much she weighs. Um, I had a friend, actually, that had one come down. It was a young juvenile, and it tried to get one of her chickens. And the chicken sort of turned around and looked at the hawk and started pecking at the hawk and the hawk flew off into the tree and just sort of sat there and thought about its life for a little bit I think um you know young birds it's like kids learning how to drive so occasionally they go after things that they really shouldn't um but just sort of good to think about uh if they are around your area let me see I have a couple more questions sorry about that thank you for that question Sharon um Eric she is beautiful does she have a favorite treat? Do you have a favorite treat? I think you like, she loves when you watch her. Oh, sorry, I moved my hand. I apologize. I'll put it over here. She loves when you watch her, um, when you give her her mice in the morning, she'll wait and she'll look at you and then she'll run over and jump on the mouse. And so I think, oh, that was a feather that just went by. Um, I think sometimes that's her treat is to be like, look, I killed this. Um, and it makes her feel kind of important. Um, and she's funny. She'll stand there with it under her foot, looking at you like, do you, do you see what I did? Like I hunted this and it's so impressive. Is it so impressive? Um, but she's quite fond of her chicks and quail, um, that she gets in. I have to move my hand over here so that I'm just going to move slow. Okay. I understand. There you go. Let's see. Elise, are her wings clipped? Her wings are not clipped. Um, however, the damage that was done when she went through the window, um, caused, I know I'm just going to put my hand right here. Okay. Caused her wings to atrophy. Um, so there, she can't use them to fly or anything. And then remember, I mentioned that she, even though her name is Grace, she's not graceful. Um, so she will tumble and lose her balance and fall. Um, right now you can see that she's sort of adjusting, um, just the littlest movement of my thumb will make her lift her wing up to adjust. Um, that's you. Are you so good looking? Who's that pretty bird in there? Oh, you're so good. Yeah, so good. Oh, good Gracie. Uh, so when she falls, unfortunately, um, she will uh, break her feathers and things like that. So we've retrofitted her enclosure um, so that she has ramps. Uh, and if it wasn't raining and snowing and I don't even know what it's doing outside right now, um, maybe on another live, I'll, I'll try and show you her enclosure. Uh, so we're constantly tweaking and adjusting enclosures while also keeping them, um, you know, these guys are creatures of habit. So they get used to that. Who's that pretty lady in there? Is that you? That's a beautiful grace. You see yourself? Um, so we figured out that she was still trying to fly and um, so we not only put in ramps for her, but we also had to sort of put up walls so that she could run. And she's very proud of herself when she runs um, and flaps her wings and shows everybody how fast she is. Uh, but she is an eternal optimist and would continue to try to, you know, launch herself off. So we've created, she can be anywhere in her enclosure. She can be on the ground. She can be up high. She can be in the sun. Um, she can be in her heated yurt. She can be hidden um, nine times out of 10, she's smack dab in the front window waiting for people to come by. Uh, she does this little bow that she's doing right now. Um, in the springtime, sometimes she'll kind of turn her head upside down and look at you, uh, which is really fun. And then when you walk away, she'll do her pee -wee. I know. You do that call? I don't do it as well as you do. It's absolutely stunning. Um, so she is one happy girl. I can tell you that. Let's see. Oh, Cassandra Stanley, the name of the podcast by our friend and colleague. Um, so the podcast, just go for, um, go to lead with nature. And that is Dan Gardoki's, um, organization. He's absolutely stunning and wonderful group, uh, or organization that he's putting together. He is brilliant and fun and just makes learning spectacular. So definitely tune in, um, and check him out and see what he's got going on. Right. My friend, and we're looking forward to collaborating with him coming up as well. Do you have a video of her doing her call, Michaela? Oh, that's cool. You so you came up to visit her? Yeah, she's a chatty Kathy. She loves chatting. She loves visitors. Um, and it, it's interesting. So I was actually reading an article the other day that was talking about um, how animals in 
zoos, aquariums, um, farm, like farms that people go and visit, um, and just sanctuaries and other places like that. They're missing the interaction with humans. Some of our ambassadors are like, this is great. No one's around. We totally get that too. Um, but like Violet, our vulture, Bertram, our raven, Dante, our crow, Gracie, um, she misses, they miss that interaction. Um, and so, you know, we go out and we interact with them, but it's that funny sort of like, I know you, what are you doing here again? Right? So I can also show you guys, um, because she is a raptor, we're going to talk about why you're a raptor, right? There's three main things. Um, let's see. I know we always feel bad when we walk away too, but it's funny. They, I think that they, um, they certainly know. I know I just have to do this real quick over here. They know what they're doing and they know how to get us back too. It's like Dante or Crow. The minute you walk away, you'll hear him go, good boy. Um, and that's usually to get you to come back, right? So she is a raptor. She's a broadwing hawk. There's three main things that make birds raptors. Um, the first is that incredible eyesight. Um, you can see that sort of foggy um, little bit in her left eye. Uh, that is a cataract. And so we've been monitoring that. We have um, Dr. Claude um, from Portsmouth Emergency Hospital. She is a phenomenal ophthalm ophthalmologist. I always screw that up. Um, so she comes and she checks on Miss Grace, um, you know, once, twice, three times a year sometimes. Um, and we monitor the growth of that um, cataract in her eye just to make sure that it's still comfortable and it's not bothering you, right? And it's not. So far, she's doing great. Um, the second thing that raptors have are that is that beautiful, strong, hooked beak. So if I turn, I know, can I put this up here? I'm just going to hold it right there. So you see that beautiful hooked beak. That's actually a broad-winged hawk um, skull. So you can see that they have that beautiful hooked beak. They don't have the sclerotic ring that the owls do. Um, but their eyes are, you know, definitely incredible as far as eyesight goes. We talk about that beak as a knife and we talk about their feet as a fork. Um, so we always tell kids, you know, they'd look pretty silly um, picking up a fork and a knife with their, with their wing, right? And the kids go, oh, they can't do that. But what they do, because what they eat out in the wild, and that was a question from earlier. Hi, Justice, how are you? Um, out in the wild, yeah, I'm going to talk about what you eat. They will eat shrews and voles, um, as well as chipmunks, uh, smaller birds, but usually they're juveniles or fledglings, um, more of an easy prey for these guys. Um, they accidentally sometimes eat June bugs and crickets and, and the like, uh, but they definitely are incredible, incredible rodent control. But if they get a chipmunk, you know, if they get a small mouse, they can swallow it whole, but if they get a chipmunk, they can't swallow that whole. And also if they're feeding their babies, they need to be able to rip it up into smaller pieces. Um, so they use, I'm gonna hold it up again, okay. Thank you. They use those talons on the end of their feet um, to really hold that food down. And then they use that beautiful beak to go ahead and, and rip it, rip the meat off the bones and things like that. They're wonderful parents. Um, Grace has actually been a wonderful foster mom a number of times. And that allows us to release those babies without them becoming imprinted. Um, on humans. They can imprint on Grace. They imprint on the call and all of those things. So Grace has been an absolutely phenomenal um, foster mom, which is pretty spectacular. Huh, my friend? Do you need a little beak trim? It's looking a little bit long, my dear, right? Oh my goodness. She's also available through our um, Adopt an Ambassador program. If you guys go onto our website, it's um, www dot the center for wildlife dot org katie yes she does watch every move i make so these guys it's interesting they're, they are um they're pretty mel or pretty in tuned with what's going on um and they have to be both for catching prey as well as staying safe um so smart girl she's a very very smart girl um so if you do go onto the website www dot the center for wildlife dot org uh, you can learn more about the center uh, we have a really cool um, double or a matching gift going on right now. So if you make a donation through, I think, April 22nd, or sorry, 
yep, April 22nd, Earth Day. Um, we have a really generous donor that is uh, matching each gift up to $50,000, which is huge for us. Um, and so if you're able to go and do that, you can find out about that. You can also go and find more about Grace, our education programs, um, and also uh, the Adopt an Ambassador program. It's just $25 for a whole year, and you get a beautiful card. It'd be a good Mother's Day gift. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge for all you guys out there. Kathy, would we do cataract surgery if it got bad? The potential is there for us to be able to do it. I would always defer to Dr. Claude um, to have her opinion. Um, just because you can do a surgery doesn't always mean that you should do the surgery. So, um, you know, it would take, we'd have to take into account her age, um, how much the eye was bothering her, um, weigh the pros and cons and things like that. Uh, but luckily right now, are they feeding baby squirrels? Oh, delish, huh? Um, luckily right now we don't have to worry about it, but we're so grateful. Um, I know it's true. We're so grateful for Dr. Claude and her expertise. Um, and she comes up and donates uh, her time and it's just so helpful. Um, and eyes are really cool. So definitely get involved with uh, ophthalmology if you can, because it's absolutely spectacular. What are you doing? Lift in that wing and okay. All right, we're good. What do you think? So if anyone has any more questions, um, we will certainly answer them for you. Um, and if not, I'm going to close out and let Miss Grace settle in a little bit more so that we can give her her annual exam and then get her back out. Right? Excellent. So you guys, you made it through another week. Oh, Katie, why is she chattering so much? She is, um, she wants to know what you're saying. Just chatting just chitter chatter, sort of mumbling. Thank you, Robert, so much. She is a little intimidating, right? That's stare. Uh, it's the beauty of stare, we call it. But she is about as sweet a bird as you could ever come across. So still in it, still a raptor. And, you know, you got to love that. But you got to just leave her and let her be, right? Thank you, Sharon. Thank you guys so much. Have an absolutely wonderful weekend. Stay safe. And um, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow for another Facebook Live in the morning. And enjoy your Saturday. All right. Bye. Hold on, Grace.